99 problems, but a mortgage ain't one. All right, and uh, finally from the Q&A uh, series that I've been doing, this is the fourth video in a row. Uh, this is a kind of a long one. I, she, she snuck in like four or five questions, so I'll just, I'll just make this a video. Kristen M says, what were, the, uh, the le uh, what were at least the top five most important reasons you selected Dora when you bought her? How much have you spent on non-mechanical modifications improvements since you bought? And how much have you spent on mechanical maintenance since you bought? Um, and if you had to do all over again, back when you were buying Dora, would you still buy Dora or would you have opted for something else? Most important question, number five, what would you buy now if you sold Dora for the price you're asking for her? Well, again, about the sale of the vehicle and what I'd buy next, I went over that in the last video or the one before that, or two videos ago. Um, I'll see what's on the market at the time. Um, and uh, I do have a down payment on it and I definitely got the money that I wanted for it or I'm go going to be getting the money I wanted for it if the deal goes through at the end of this month. So um, that being said, why I bought Dora. I, I went over this a while back but I guess you missed that. I went over um, a, 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 quite a long video actually about why I chose this particular Class B and it was mainly, okay, my main criteria is to make sure that I can park in a regular size parking spot and even this is a little bit too big but I would not get anything bigger than this however for you know for the price and for um, uh, the size I think it was well worth the money because it is um, two feet longer than all of the other same era Ram extended wide body camper vans out there all the class B's like pleasure way wide bodies road trek wide bodies from the era and um, uh, uh, leisure travel van wide bodies, coach house wide bodies, you name it. Um, they're all 19 feet. Uh, this is 21 feet because Explorer extended the back section with a fiberglass wraparound cap. So the back, the bedroom area, the back windows and the back, yeah, the back fiberglass mold there, uh, it's all separate from the steel van body. And the way that they made the Explorer a wide body, I really like the way they cut it down the middle, they sliced the van down the middle and they tapered it out the edges so the back is, uh, you know, about 10 inches wider than the, the front section. Um, so it's, it's kind of a, a stealth wide body, if you will. You wouldn't know it's a wide body until you look at it on an angle and then you can see how the body tapers outwards. It's kind of cool. A lot of money, that's why they were expensive to do it that way, but I love it. And also because it was the only uh, wide body um, Ram Class B that had dual wheels. They put the extra money into converting it into dualies as well, so basically no spared expense. And the quality is top notch on these. I did my research, I've been looking at Explorers for over 10 years, and uh, I said one day I'll be able to get one. Uh, and uh, sure enough, here I, go, here I got one. Now, I almost gave up on my search because it's very hard to find this era uh, Explorer. This is, these are the newest ones you can get. They made them all the way up until just recently. 2003 was the last year. When they stopped making Ram vans, they, uh, Explorer basically went under. Uh, that was the end of it. They tried making Explorers on Sprinter vans, but they just did not sell. And the company was sold off, and it's now owned by, uh, uh, I think it's a commercial bus truck company You know that makes custom wheelchair vans and uh, shuttle buses and, and stuff like that, but uh, it's pretty much defunct now. Explorer only exists in name only. The original company and founders are, are, are gone. So um, I liked it because of that. Now I would have got, uh, if I hadn't got Dora, to answer that part of your question, it would have been a uh, probably a pleasure way wide body, same era, maybe 1995 to maximum 2002 or 2003. And um, they're very, very, very good quality as well. Just like Explorer, solid wood, no particle board, and just well built. The, the quality on these is top notch. Um, I've had the Class e, uh, C's and the Class A's as I've spoken about before. And uh, they're very much, a lot of them are just, uh, you know, one by twos and glue and, and little nails holding them together. They're just, you know, they're not built to last. Whereas this is solid, very thick walls, thick insulation and uh, no particle board to rot away, and it doesn't warp and bend like a Class C and A when you're driving around town. Um, definitely a big difference in, in the quality. Um, so, yeah, it all really comes down to that. So as far as top five reasons go, I mean, there's, there's lots of reasons. I mean, I'm, maybe I'm giving just two or three here, but they were good enough. I almost bought a Class B Pleasure Way. It was only, I think it was a 99 or 2000, basically exactly the same chassis as this one. 
and it was right here in a suburb of Vancouver actually and I was a day away from going to take a look at it and possibly buy it when I found this Explorer on the other side of the continent in St. Louis, Missouri. So I just plunked down the extra money and had this one shipped up here because this is the one I originally wanted anyways. I just had my heart set on it because I've known about them for so long and I always wanted one of these. I think it was 2004, 2005 I saw a brochure for this model, the Explorer 230 XLW wide body, and I fell in love with it. So um, I love the, the size of it. I don't want the big flat walls uh, like a class C or A in the city. Um, uh, this just parks everywhere, fits everywhere. It's stealth looking. Nobody knows it's a motorhome. It just It's just so perfect for my lifestyle. So yeah, if I were to do it again, it would be, and I couldn't get an Explorer, it would probably be a pleasure way. If not a pleasure way, it would be uh, the Islander wide bodies, which there are quite a few of them around here. Um, they were built here in BC as well. They're very, very nice. But yeah, so hopefully that answers uh, your questions about why I chose the Explorer. And as far as the, the, the cost goes, I couldn't tell you. I have a pile of receipts uh, for everything that I've done to it, uh, mechanically and non-mechanically. Mechanically, very little. These are, this is just, it's been a dream. It's just turnkey, go every day. I do the basic maintenance, the fluids and all that, and keep the maintenance up to par and you're, you're good. I mean, I had a, I've never had problems with my Dodges. I, I had a 1974 Dodge Class C and over two years of daily driving it around the city. Daily driving. It was just perfect. The only thing that I have ever had to do with that was change the starter on it. Uh, when the starter started to go, I just went down to Canadian Tire and bought a starter. It was only like 70 bucks, I believe, and I just changed it in the parking lot. It took 20 minutes. I mean, they're, they're, they're so simple. That's what I love about these. And even a modern one like this, a 98, is still just about as simple as a 74. There's, there's not much difference between them. So it's very, very, very easy to work on, and parts are plentiful. They're cheap. They're everywhere. So uh, as far as that goes, I haven't really had to put any money into it uh, mechanically. Now, non-mechanically, it's, it's in the thousands. I've spared no expense uh, upgrading it and as you guys have probably seen in most of my videos there I don't cheap out I do everything the best I can uh, I want to make everything better than the factory uh, and, and I mean that like there's a lot of things that we've done in here like wiring and switches which is done better than the factory of any motorhome that I've ever seen before <laughs> so I like to keep everything as pro as possible all the wires are hidden and professionally done you know cutting holes perfectly the holes we cut for the speakers on the roof outside, for example, are better than the holes they cut for the speakers inside from the factory. So I, I like to do everything right. So uh, I, I, I don't have a round figure for you. I, I, I'm not gonna pull out all my receipts and start adding it all up. But I can tell you this much, it's money well spent, it's home improvement, and it feels good to spend your money uh, upgrading your house. Uh, it's not like renting a place and, and uh, buying furniture and all the rest of that, you just, it's, to me, I, I wouldn't want to spend this kind of money in, uh, if I was renting a place because you don't own it and you need to ask permission to do everything from drilling holes to painting the walls to even changing your blinds, you know? I don't feel any ownership when I'm renting a place. With this, I feel complete ownership. So money well spent and uh, I'm not worried about it if I don't get it all back uh, when I sell the vehicle. But uh, for the price that I've um, agreed on with the potential buyers, I will be getting back the, the what I've spent into it um, uh, technically, but I won't be getting back, obviously, the, if you were to add up the time spent, then the labor of, it's just a labor of love though, so it's really not a big deal. I love it, and uh, I don't regret uh, one penny that I put into this. So there you go, hopefully that answers your question. Keep on rocking the free world. Keep on rocking the free world. Pick up your Keep on Rocking in the Free World sticker now, or choose from some of the others over on my site at justincredible.net.